cool start of this for movement of uh, Gina Serra Sonata Opus 47. But how did Gina Serra get the idea to write something like this? Um, the interesting part is that he used a lot of Argentine folk uh, elements in this. And for this fourth movement, he used mostly dance forms. He used um, the malambo, the chacarera, and the milonga. These are three dance forms he used, but mostly he used the malambo. And the malambo is a fast uh, dance form, which is accompanied mostly by a guitar, and has this typical 6-8-3-4 feel, which always changes in between. And the dancer always uses this kind of dancing techniques, which is called zapateo. I will show an example. So as you can see, the dancer actually makes music when he plays. Um, you could really hear a kind of rhythmic uh, melody, let's say, which the dancer makes over the music because the chords are quite simple. It's always this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, da, 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 da. Always this is the major feel which the chords give. But the dance gives a really another, another feel, which is quite interesting because if you think about the music of Ginastera, the, the finale, the the thing that references to the music is this measure of 3-4 which always comes back and gives this other feel with these chords that go 1, 2, 3 and then back 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, something like this. But if we listen to the dancer, this is maybe more close to um, what Gina Serra wrote because the dancer that he makes um, irregular beats but in a regular way because he places strong beats somewhere else because of the way they hit the ground. If you listen just a small part and really look at the feet. So as you can see there were different techniques. There was a technique of the complete stomp of the foot on the ground, only the heel, only the tip, and also um, a slide or a stomp of the feet, but uh, uh, a flat feet, something like this. So there are four sounds, maybe even more, but these are some basic sounds they make. And every time they do a stomp, it's kind of an accent. And the other ones, they have not this very strong sound, so they won't sound as an accent. But the thing is, they don't only stomp on the strong beats, they mostly do, but they also do on other beats, which changes this ID completely and gives this feel like Gina Serra wrote, 78685 is something Gina Serra wrote in the beginning of the finale. And this gives this also gives this feel of this a strong beat which changes. So it's really connected to the dance. We will talk about the dance again later. Um, the musical part, here is a small example which I will play of a regular malambo. So this is a regular malambo where we had these two chords, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, two chords and one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we have the repique, which always comes back, and this is this more three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, so we get this change of six, eight, and three, four, which also comes back a lot in the piece. But there is also something else which is really interesting, is a chasquido. If you don't know what a chasquido is, in the previous video about the bidala, I explained what a chasquido is and how you have to play it. So it's really uh, interesting to learn, because this is something Argentine folk musicians always use. They never use tambora or golpe, they use chasquido, which is a combination. So we have... So this sound for the chasquido. If we have a closer look at the score now, and first we will talk again about the music. And um, in the score you can see this measure of 3-4 coming back. And this is what he derived from the musical playing of the malambo. So in the malambo you will always have this measure of 3-4. And this is what Ginocero also does. So I will play it. Measure of 3-4 in the end again. Dun, 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 dun. So, um, this is what he took from this part. But what is more interesting is what he took from the dancing. Because as I said before, the dancing is not um, 
this rhythm which has rests in it. This always goes on, this dancing, which is quite interesting because this is what happens in the Ginastera uh, uh, music as well. It goes on, it never stops. So it's interesting to see that um, you could compare this to the dancing. Like I said, the stomp of the feet is a strong beat and the other ones are softer. If you would dance the rhythm which is written with a stomp on the one, uh, on every tambora, let's say, because there's a rhythm of tambora, if this would be a stomp and the rest would be hill or, or tip, it would sound for a dancer like this. I will say the, the numbers. One, two, three. So that's kind of uh, how it could sound for, these, sound for these dancers. And this is quite the same and it's a bit more regular than irregular how we play it with tambora because we make this a strong beat and it's just this, this um, changing between one, two, three and one, two, which is quite regular in this Argentine music. And a dancer will be um, really used to playing like this, well, dancing like this. And I think that Gina Serra took this way of dancing make, and making music with dance and transferred it into this playing technique and with the tambora as like maybe the strong beat. Um, I'm of course not very sure, but it's a really nice approach um, to see it as this because you could dance more while you play. Because you have to imagine that every time you play tambora it's a stomp with the feet and for example going uh, up with the finger is a tip and going down is uh, the heel. So it's, it's a small dance, but just with your finger that you um, dance it a bit. But there is something else Ginastera wrote on the bottom of the score um, about the tambora, which is really interesting. I will just read out loud what he wrote here in the score. The tambora chords are played by the right hand clenched fist which hits the string over the sound hole dryly with the last falling of all fingers in order to subdue all vibration. At fortissimo this stroke must be sufficiently energetic to cause the strings to rebound against the fingerboard. Now comes the interesting part. This effect of Argentinian popular style playing is essential to the fulfillment of the composer's intentions. So. He just said that the effect of Argentinian popular style playing is tambora. But um, they don't use tambora, they only use chasquillo. Tambora is rarely used. The uh, Argentine folk players will mostly use chasquillo. So it could be that Ginastera based this fourth movement, the finale, on this playing technique of chasquillo. I'm not saying you have to play it with chasquido, but I, I will do it just for an ex to show you an example. Um, but maybe this is where uh, Gina Serra started from. But the thing is, if you play a chasquido, it's completely different because you have these strings that keep sounding. It gives a completely different feel of the piece. Um, you could play it like this. It's an interesting approach and it's good to know that it could be like this because they wrote the Argentine popular style of playing. And after taking these lessons in Argentine guitar playing, I learned there is only one Argentine style of playing, and this is the chasquido. This is really something from Argentina. So this is the typical way of playing it. I will show, give you an example of how you could play the finale like this, um, but I'm not saying it's the best way to play it because in my opinion, maybe Gina Serra started from this idea, but he changed because it wasn't clear enough to play everything just keto. You will notice it while I'm playing it. Just to give an example, there are other places in the finale where we will play just keto, and I will talk about this later. But first, the first part played just keto. So just to give you an idea, it sounds completely different, um, but it's a nice uh, approach 
Also, just to know it already is a, a good way to start off in this piece. Just knowing it's probably based on this dance form, but there's also this chasquito, which can be used, which is really interesting. But for me, the dance form was uh, more a direct influence. So I also added this little scheme because um, as a musician taking dance lessons is just a little something um, to, to know, which is really interesting. It was for me really hard to learn this Argentine dances a little bit, uh, but it helped if I wrote it in music. So as it is such a musical way of dancing and you hear the sound of the music, it's also very nice uh, to write it down in music because it's way easier to understand. You can see here very clearly, the first one is left foot stomped, then right tip, right foot stomped, right tip. Just the first line to give you an ID. And um, you also see a heel, which is really interesting because you see, okay, it's on this beat, I have to play this part of my foot on this beat, and it's a musical way of uh, learning how to dance. And this is how I see the score for the Milan, because if you look at the last, the last line, for example, every beat is played, but every beat is played differently, so you get these different sounds. And this is maybe something what Gina Stera used to get this ID uh, from the dancing. Who knows? Let's go on to um, the other dance forms which Gina Stera used. So, as I said before, there were more uh, dance forms than only the malambo in the fourth movement of this sonata. And um, the other dance movements are milonga and chakrera. We'll talk about the milonga now. There is these three bars where um, he specifically use, uses this milonga rhythm with a bordoneo on the bass, so the same bass line, which is really typical for milan milonga. Bordoneo and this rhythm 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. These are these typical uh, ways of playing a milonga. People also refer to it as a fast tango. Um, I will give you an example of a traditional milonga and three ways how you can play it. Another form could be, which I said before, with this bordoneo on the bass. Or with this kind of melody in the Bordoneo, which is used the most often. So these are three typical ways of uh, playing accompaniment of a milonga. And you immediately hear this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, especially when you have this Bordoneo on the bass. What did Gina Serra do? He took this rhythm and he placed three chords uh, underneath it, like this. And he stopped halfway, let's say, in the third uh, measure. Um, so you see Bordoneo on the bass, like this, and the chords, the upper chord. Something more interesting in the milonga, which you can add, which is really interesting. In the milonga, they always will accentuate um, the, 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 the second part, so where you do it the second time, the like this. So if you add a little accent there, it already sounds more like this folkloric way of playing, or you could play it also more with the uh, rasgliado, also, which is also nice. Or only the strong beat with the rasgliado. Just some ideas how you can accentuate and make it sound more like this traditional milonga. Um, the last dance form used is this chacarera. And um, this is also quite interesting because the chacarera also has a dance form and a, a musical form. But in this part he used the musical form for sure. Because the dance form is um, split up in different uh, parts. You have where they dance in a small circle, where they, with, it's also the partner, and they, they call it the, uh, it's a small waltz because they always use this one, two, three on their feet, one, two, three, one, two, three, which is really interesting because it also goes over three, four, which is, which gives a nice uh, feel because they think in a completely different way, these dancers, than how we see the music. But there's also Zapateo which I talked about in the Malambo part. It's, it's this same technique, Zapateo, 
and Chacarera uh, use, uh, I mean Malambo and uh, Chacarera use the same Zapateo, this musical feet work, let's say. Um, and um, so what did Ginastera do? He used this rhythm and this musical playing of um, um, accompaniment, let's say. Let's first um, listen to this um, accompaniment on the bombo, which is always the basic, let's say. This is always how this is based, just this basic rhythm. So, there we had the, only the basic form of the chacarera. Uh, and you also saw again, head of the drum, rim of the drum, just like in the bidala and the other video. So it's um, interesting to see, we will also use again this chasquido. And this is really important. Um, we play again chasquido and the chacarera, this is already written for guitar the way it's written here. Uh, which is also again very interesting. Um, I will play um, a traditional chacarera form for you. So, you saw again, we played a lot of chasquido combined with a small rasguiado. And um, what is now interesting is, what did Ginastera do with this? Again, he took the rhythm, he made his own um, chord again, this is uh, quite a special chord, something like this. What Gina Stera wrote. So we have these upper notes played regularly and then four times rasgado. Like this. If we compare this to the chacarera right hand, the chacarera right hand was like this. The only thing I changed with the original is I played one um, chasquido less. So you See, it almost sounds the same, because we did two ch chasquidos in the beginning. And if you play chasquido, it could be that the two upper strings sound, or these two, it's, it's a small difference, it just happens. And then you play these. So it, it's not quite interesting to play the original right hand technique of a chacarera over this chacarera rhythm, because it's definitely a chacarera rhythm which you wrote because you have these two high notes and four um, little rasgueados. It's really um, clear that he used the idea of uh, chacarera there for his rhythm. But it's also nice to use the chasquito because probably he knew it sounded on guitar like this. But he didn't really take into account the chasquito because the chasquito could sound like it's exactly the same, there's just the tambora added. And then if you would play this, it would it would sound the same, but again, more a folkloric way. It's maybe nice to play these little um, accents like, hey, I know it's chakera, I'm playing chakera. So um, just so you have an idea. So, this was the last dance form, which is uh, also used in this finale part. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, be sure to check out also the other, the previous video, the Vidala and my recording of the complete piece. So I hope you liked the video and learned something about it. See you next time maybe. Bye.